I mean, you could read, well, here's what we're trying, here's what we're going to try to do. We're going to try to compute volume. Um, like I said, you guys wanted to take a look at, you know, how to prove this. We, you know, can go through all those details. Um, but let's actually try to, you know, think about this. And it's, it's actually a very simple process. Okay, so what we want to do is we're going to rotate this curve here about the x-axis. So we're going to rotate about the x-axis. So let me sketch this idea again of what's really happening and then the formal aspects of the proof we could, you know, we could go over but we won't waste time trying to videotape that. So what you, what you guys have here is what's called a bounded region, okay? So you're going to take this bounded region, sometimes they can say R, and they'll define R for you very often. You know, R, this bounded region will be um, a region defined by um, the curve Y equals F of X, the vertical line X is A, the vertical line X is B, and then they say the X, what? Axis, okay? So they're talking about this being the top of the bounded region, left portion, right portion, x-axis is the bottom portion. So that's just a bounded region, meaning you have boundary, you know, it's bounded, uh, you have these boundaries around this. And when you rotate this, okay, about the x-axis, this two-dimensional, you know, representation picture now becomes what? Three dimensions and it's a solid. Okay, because if this, every point here uh, in this region gets rotated about the x-axis, you create what's called a solid here. Okay, and so when you create this solid, and I'm out of space here, but what you'll have, you know, kind of something that looks kind of like this. Okay. Guess. And then you have this kind of solid that was created by just simply rotating about this x-axis. Okay, you okay? You okay with that? No? Does it look a little weird? Yeah, I know. And both my parents are artists. Okay, it does look weird. But maybe you want to look at this and say, okay, does it kind of look, you know, or a sort of abstract picture of this all? You know, kind of looks like this. Here's the solid, okay? If you want to think of the solid there. Anyway, so here's our solid. Now, what you want to do is this, okay? We call this the disk method. And the reason we call this the disk method is because if you take a look at this, we're going to take a look at a small, at a small portion here. We're going to call that small portion delta x. Okay, so when you when you you know went through the theory of this, when we take when we took a look at that, when we partitioned our you know our x-axis into n you know subintervals. We kind of went through that idea. Uh, partition your x-axis into n subintervals. This was a you know interval that we created back in calculus one, right? The small interval had a length delta x. So what you're looking at in this picture here, you know, is essentially the same thing. Okay, so, I mean, we won't go through all that detail since it's kind of review, but here's our delta x. This is a review of what we had. And what do we call this, actually? What does that look like to you? A uh, does this look kind of like a rectangle? Sort of. It's supposed to be in what? Three dimensions. So it's, it's almost like it's, it's not really a rectangle, but if you were to put a rubber band around, let's say, your water bottle, rubber band around a water bottle, okay, you got this, I don't have a rubber band, do I have a rubber band? Put a rubber band around, you kind of look at this as a strip here, okay, around this thing, but it's more than a strip, it's actually solid, it's a disc. The point I want to make to you is, what does that look like to you? It looks like a disc. Now, how, what do you associate with the disc? There's another shape that we associate. It's a, it's kind of looks like a what? Cylinder, I guess. Is that right? So this looks like a cylinder. They don't call it the cylinder method. 
well, kind of. This is our disk method. We're just creating a disk. And so let me ask you a question. Sorry. For the disk, how do you determine the volume of, of a disk? How do you determine this volume? Well, volume here, ladies and gentlemen, for this picture here, is if we take the cross-sectional area, the cross-sectional area, and I multiply it by what? That delta x, that difference, cross-sectional area, and a difference here, okay? What you end up getting here is the volume of this particular disk, okay? Because that's um, how we compute volume. The problem is that the area here varies. So area really is a function of x because depending upon where you take that cross-sectional area here for the various values of x, okay, that is a different value. Do you guys agree what I'm saying? You say, what do you mean cross-sectional area? If I slice it here, isn't the area different? If I slice it here, isn't the area slightly smaller? You know what I'm saying? It gets larger and larger. Okay, here cross-sectional area is large, but as I keep crossing, it's going to be smaller depending upon the value of x. So the area is a function of what? x. Okay? So the main idea behind this here, this method, this disk method, is simply, again, going through the fact that you have a disk here. If I rotate this for my delta x increment, how do you get the volume? would be simply to multiply the cross-sectional area with that delta x. So fine, okay, this is again review. This only applies to what? The volume for this small disk. The volume for one of these disks here. Remember, you partitioned your, your x-axis into n subintervals. So what you now have is simply, you know, n disks here. Okay, so if we go back to what we've done, we got n disks, so well, that's an approximation. So if we remember, that Vn, or the volume, is V1 plus V2 plus, you know, Vn, where each one of these volumes is dependent upon the value of x. So I got that Ax delta x, call that maybe x1, plus Ax2 delta x, all the way through AXN delta X. And again, this is a very crude, rough sketch of all of what we're doing. And the details are back in your book. This volume here that we are looking at isn't the exact volume. Okay? So we're going to have to take again that limit as n goes to infinity. Um, and what you're going to end up having again as your limit as n goes to infinity that the volume will be that limit and goes to infinity of essentially those what um, volumes of each individual disk. Okay, so you can call this, for example, O what uh, V n. Anyway, so what you'll end up getting is that integral from x is a to x is b, ax, delta x, and again, I'm going through, this is a very, very rough sketch. We're just trying to review to get to the applications. And this is where you have your disk method because this is your cross-sectional area function, and this is the depth, or this, this length here, this length of the delta x. So this is the formula that we'll be using here to compute volume when we rotate about the, you know, the x-axis, uh, x and we call that the, the, the disk method. So let's keep that in mind. And again, it's a very rough sketch. But we want to save time and get to all the applications that people all want to look at, right? So for this review, we'll have the volume goes from A to B, A of x, and uh, you're going to get this delta x now becomes your dx, right? Anyway, cross-sectional area. So for example, 
let's take a look. And again, I have to go through something kind of simple. Y equals square root of X. Y equals zero. X equals four. And the, again, the X axis. <coughs> so, so as, as a review here, remember this is gonna be the region that they want you to uh, rotate, and they want you to rotate about the x-axis. So we're gonna rotate about the x-axis. Here's the disk method. So what, is, what is really vital for you to actually see how to go about this problem is you guys have to graph this. Okay, so we're going to have to graph the region they're describing. And that's kind of where students get have a lot of problems, right? You're going to graph the square root of x. There is the graph, okay? We're, that's one boundary. y is 0. What is that code for saying if y is 0? Is that the x-axis? Okay, x is 4, where is that? Do you guys know what x is 4 is? x is 4 is a vertical line, okay? And I guess they actually, when I put x-axis here, is really to rotate about the x-axis in my notes. Anyway, here's the curve, y is the square root of x. So what you guys see here is a particular what? Region and they want you to rotate about your x-axis. Okay, and again, my, my sketches, if I rotate this about the x-axis, both my parents are artists, but yet, you know, that art gene was missing I'm going to say to you guys, okay, focus on a couple of things here. You should actually be seeing here, if you create your, your strip, if I created, first of all, let's do it this way, this strip here, right, I got my strip. I'm going to rotate this strip how? About the x-axis. Is that true? What does that strip become? It's now going to become a what? I think we'd call this a, a disc, right? So if I take this strip and I rotate it about the x-axis, I'm now creating what we call a disc. Okay, we call this the disc method. Now, the real issue is going to be here. How do we describe, right, this cross-sectional area for a disk? So we want to describe the cross-sectional area. Here's a picture of your disk, right? How, did, how, would you, how do we actually describe that cross-sectional area? Anybody know? area, even though this is a disk, here's my delta x, right, that delta x. So this portion actually is depth, your delta x up here. We need just a cross-sectional area. And you say, well, where is that? That's pretty much for some value of x here, okay, that shape that you guys see here. And what shape is that? Do you guys know? If I had to find the cross-sectional area of this disk, I'm really focusing on this. What is this shape here? It's a circle, good. How do you find the area of a circle? Right, you have an area of a circle. What's the area of a circle? 
Good. It is what? Area is pi what? R squared. Okay. So it's pi R squared. Pi is a constant. What is R? It's the radius of the circle. Is that true? So R is going to be right here. Here's my R. So if I go back to my original problem here, how do I find R? What's the radius of that circle here? See the circle R, your radius? This is, this is what they're talking about here. So anybody know? Because I took this, this rectangular region, rotated it about the uh, x-axis. This is that R. Could you guys tell me, how do I find it? How do I represent my, my radius? Because lo notice, depending on my value of x, doesn't my radius change? Right? If I, if I actually drew my strip here, I have a smaller radius. I got a larger radius, even larger, larger, larger radius. So how do I describe the radius? Yes, it is. It's right here, isn't it? In other words, isn't this coordinate point here? This is an x-coordinate, right? We have our x-coordinate. And what is this? The corresponding what? y-coordinate value. Well, how do I, how, what's the relationship between my x-coordinate and my y-coordinate? It's right here. It's y equals the square root of x. They gave it to you. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is your, your radius here is a function of x. It changes. In some ways, you can say, you know, r is the square root of x, really. And so, what happens now, over here for your r, you put the square root of x. So my area function becomes pi square root of x to the second power, or the area simply pi, what's the square root of x to the second power? Pi x. This is a function of what? x. So because the radius is a function of x, your cross-sectional area is a function, uh, function of x. This is in black, the cross-sectional area. So when you want to deduce your volume, what you do is replace what? A of x with the pi x function. This is, the, this is your area function. What are your limits? x varies for what values? 0 to what? To 4, they told us. So from 0 to 4, this area is pi x, don't forget, dx, and your dx simply represents your what increment? Delta x. You okay with that? So what you're doing is you're adding, we're adding all of those disks here. You got a small disk, big, bigger, bigger, bigger. You're adding all those disks, and that's what gives you that sum, you know, that's going to represent the total, which is volume. Anyway, that's the, where the key is. The key is right here to find the radius function, okay? And it's, if you guys know how to measure top to bottom, like how do you guys actually measure with a ruler? Anything vertical. We always take the top measurement and subtract it with the what? Bottom. This is your ruler. So this can tell me, oh, the height for any value of x is really that y value. So that's the radius. So now what you guys would do is what? Integrate here. So our volume will be, what is this? Pi x squared over 2, evaluated from what? x is 0 and x is 4. Is that right? So I get pi over 2, uh, 4 squared minus 0 squared, and pi over 2, isn't that 16? Or what's my volume going to be? 8 pi? So the volume is 8 pi. And they call this the what? The disk method only because if I take my strip and I rotate it about the x-axis, what you should see is a what? Disk. That's all. Okay? Go back again. Cross-sectional area is this black portion here. It's an area. See, you can't talk about area for a solid unless it's surface area. And that's a whole other thing. So they mean this two-dimensional cross-sectional area. And that's pretty much 
uh, what you get here. Let's do another problem, kind of easy, and then we'll kick it up a little, okay? Huh? You guys okay with that? Like I said, we're trying to review all this stuff and we'll get, we'll integrate the capitalist two material with it. So what do you think, Ed? Nice. <laughs> you can take capitalist two now? <laughs> you know, back in the good old days, we got to use both boards, remember? Oh, um, yeah. No, we, instructors never even served their office hours. Our, you didn't have like a tutoring lab or an instructor to see. You just had to what? Read your book and, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, yeah, we didn't have anything online even. It was kind of interesting, but oh well. You know, I couldn't get the volume on this because I didn't turn the beats on. Who turns their headphones on? No, there's volume. I got it going. Let's give you another example. Uh, we got it going. It's just, um, <laughs> I just thought something was going. I don't know. It's the way everything works. All right, so you got x is 0, y is 0. And we're going to rotate this about the x-axis, OK? So this is our axis of rotation. This stuff is really simple, and it's not too bad. OK, so let's go with this here. Remember, we have to get a good look at the region we're trying to describe. Like, how do we kind of get a really good look? If y is 1 minus x, we've got to know what that curve looks like. Anybody know what that looks like? Yeah, it's actually, if you, if you went back to, uh, I guess, beginning algebra, I'm used to seeing it like this, right? They switch the order. Your y-intercept is where? At 1. So my y-intercept here is at 1, right? This is 1. And then my slope is what? Negative 1. So I go down and I go to the right 1. So this is 1. All you need is actually two points to draw a line. This is linear. Anyway, this is, you know, describing my curve. Okay? It's a line. And x is 0, what does that mean? Where x is 0? That's the y axis. Good. So this is where x is 0. I'll just notate it here. And what is y is 0? x axis. So the bounded region they're talking about is here. You okay with that? They got the curve. They want it bounded by the y-axis. They want it bounded by the x-axis. This is a nice problem too. And then what are they supposed to do? Rotate about the what? About the x-axis. Now, like I said, even though both my parents are artists, You know, that art gene, kind of, you know. More of the po uh, moral of the story. Isn't my strip right here? Just take that strip. What do I do with that strip? Rotate it about the x-axis. What, what again do you see when you rotate this? You should see a what? A disk. I know that's delta x. This is my radius value here. Okay, so the radius here, when I take this and I rotate it, again, how do I find the radius of this disk? Isn't this radius going to be, again, what? You guys know? For some value of x, this is my corresponding value of y. How do I get, how do I get the radius? What is y? 1 minus x. So here, your radius will be 1 minus x, and what that means, your cross-sectional area function, which is pi r squared, becomes pi 1 minus x squared. So, what's the volume? The integral 
of the cross-sectional area dx, um, what are the limits for x? Zero to what? Zero to one. So you go from zero to one, here's our function. Zero to one, pi one minus x in parentheses squared dx. So what do you guys notice about this? Um, two things you could do, right? Depending on what course you're in, what do you guys have to do to integrate? Maybe you'd have to use FOIL. Is that true? Or what? You could use U substitution, can't you? Okay, so if, you take the, if you're in a Calculus 1 course and you're doing this, you'd probably use FOIL. Okay, because U substitution, I think, comes a little later. But you probably use FOIL and you get a nice what? I mean, you could even do it, like I said, I could even say this is uh, 1 minus 2x plus x squared. Is that what it is? That what it is? I think so. Uh, anyway, so that volume will be, pull out my pi, and I have to integrate, really, um, x squared. I'll change my terms, minus 2x plus 1 dx. This is a now nice sort of, from 0 to 1, it's a nice sort of polynomial here. It's a quadratic where from calculus 1, you just use your power rule, right? 1 third x cubed minus 2 uh, x squared over 2 plus x. We evaluate, evaluate this from x is 0 and x is 1. So you get pi, um, oh, let's kind of clean it up. 1 third x cubed minus x squared plus x. From x is 0, x is 1. Okay, so we get pi. Now, one third, you guys know what happens when you put plug in one here for your x's? What happens? Plug in one. Is don't you actually just get all the constants in front to do the arithmetic? That's a nice trick. So this is one third minus one plus one. And then I'm going to say to you, minus pi, what's nice about putting zero here? This is just a zero. So you're going to get pi, oh, look at that. These ones cancel. Pi over 3. So when I rotate this region about the x-axis, creating a solid, using that disk method, take a rectangular strip, your rectangular strip, that represents your radius for your circle, well, that volume is pi over 3. Okay, anybody have any questions? You sure? Is that easy? You guys, is that easy? This is really very simple. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very simple process. It's just, I'll show you some variations where people go, wait a minute. You know, um, let me do something here. Maybe this is time. Let's see, let's see. I'm gonna erase this. You may say, okay, well, you know, this is calculus two. That was some nice calculus one functions. Those are, you know, those, those uh, linear equations and these polynomials and our quadratics. That's, that's all fine and good. I have on my homework what? I got to find the volume. I'm going to take the curve. Y equals e to the x. Y equals e to the minus x. And x equals 1. This is the region that they're talking about and they want us to still rotate about the x-axis. Okay, so here we go. Again, we have to get a picture or an idea of what this looks like. Okay. What, what does this curve look like? What is e to the x? Yeah, isn't that an exponential curve and it represents exponential growth? So this is y equals e to the x, right? And you're right, it goes to the, it goes to the point zero, 1. Okay. Maybe we'll put it on the left, it doesn't matter. And then, what's this other curve? Thank you. 
to keep an eye on that. Thank you. Because it, it has like only, you know, it is crazy. <laughs> it can only constantly videotape for 29.99 minutes. You can't change that. Huh? Pro it can probably be modded by somebody somewhere, a hacker. But they don't, yeah, Sony doesn't do that. But that doesn't mean, you know, John, whoever do does, <laughs> you know. Yeah, Sony doesn't do it. Anyway. Okay, what is this curve again? Y equals, um, what is this curve? Do you guys know what that is? That's a growth curve. I'm sorry, that's a, that's a decay curve. You're right. It is reflected about the y-axis. Thank you. Uh, what if you said, well, I don't really necessarily know that. Well, notice a couple of things here. You, you got to know your what? Your transformation. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is where, I mean, I know I harp on this. I, even with my own daughter, oh, my God. You know, a lot, of, a lot of high school math courses, they say here, buy the TI calculator and just look at it. I hate that. Don't show anybody this stuff unless they know what it is. You know, and high school's notorious for doing the wrong thing. So anyway, um, <laughs> what, even, with my own, even with my own daughter, and anyway, you guys remember? I mean, I'm just going to say to you, even if you didn't want to take that approach, by properties of exponents, what is e to the negative 1 power? Isn't that 1 over e? So the x, this is just a very simple algebraic approach. The point I'm making is 1 over e, I mean, if e is approximately 2.78, right? 2. Point, what? 2.718, sorry. Let's say e is about 3. This is approximately like thinking of 1 third to the x, right? It's not what it is, it's approximate. The moral of the story is my base is smaller than what? 1, right? This base, 1 third, or 1 over e is smaller than 1. That makes it a decay curve. So, that decay curve does look like this, and Crystal's right, it's reflected about the y-axis, okay? So you do have to know how to sketch a couple of those curves. That's, that's the real hard part, I think, that calculus students have, ironically. Is it even the calculus? Did you guys know that? It's not even the calculus. The hard part is remembering, you know, what to do from the past. And hopefully they taught you. All right? And then, here we go. What's the other boundary? X equals what? 1. So let's say X is 1 is somewhere over where? Here. It may be. Here's your what? Boundary. Okay. This is a Calculus 2 question because these curves are the curves that you study in Calculus 2. At least, at least calculus with these curves. So now this is actually an examples that um, we need to work with. And there's a little bit more going on in this one. It's not just that you have different curves. Something else is happening. Yes, let's draw what? For, for an arbitrary value of x between 0 and 1, let's, put, let's pick an x value here. Now, if we look at that strip, that rectangular strip, you have what? Somewhat of an issue. Because if I take this rectangular strip now and I rotate this about the what? The x-axis, could you guys tell me what do you see, and again, what do you see when I rotate that strip about the x-axis? <laughs> do you see anything? Yes, you do. You see what? A donut? How about this? Do you see? This is kind of like uh, every point here gets rotated about that x-axis. You're generating a solid, right? However, what's missing here? A portion of it is missing. Is that right? It's hollow. So what you're looking at kind of, and again, sorry for my, my lack of art skills, just goes to show, you know, genetic, things aren't always what? Genetic. What you should be seeing is that rectangular strip, you know, that's the same strip right here if you want to think of it. This middle portion is hollow. Is that right? So you're looking at 
this picture. And, you know, it's kind of weird because, you know, what is that? Well, you're going to say, yeah, it's kind of a donut, right? But if you read calculus books, they don't call that a donut. What do they call it? A washer. Good job. They call this a washer. Is that what a washer looks like, Ed? It's a washer. It's a washer. So they're going to say, this is the what? The washer method. <laughs> so whatever is associated with the disk method, you can actually, you got the disk slash washer method. It's really the same method. However, it's, it's, yeah, it, there's a hollowed out center. Now you say, well, how do we deal with a hollowed out center? Uh, anybody ever make a donut? <laughs> you make donuts? How do you make a donut? Huh? Not like this? <laughs> you don't make it like this? Don't you take the dough? Here's the dough. And then you do what? You poke a what through it? You poke a hole through it? You start with the dough, and then you do what? You put your finger through the middle, and you, you, do, you throw away the what? The donut hole. It's gone. Don't you get this? That's what's happening, actually. Okay, so what you do is you take that region, this strip, rotate it about the x-axis. Yes, you get the washer. Now, how this works is that if I find the volume, you might say V big, V large, the bigger volume, and you subtract the what? Smaller volume, you're gonna end up getting the volume of that disc that you're looking at, or the washer, sorry. Essentially the volume of the washer. So if you guys remember some of this, who have, you know, you've had this, you're gonna get the, actually the volume of the washer. Okay? Um, anyway, let me see if I find some of my work on this. Here it is. Okay. So let me let me say this. How do you find this particular volume? I'll, I'll, I'll do the rest. Isn't that found by integrating the cross-sectional area minus what? The cross-sectional area. So this is the, the big cross-sectional area. And then this is the what? Small cross-sectional area. And then, um, I think I'm running out of space, which I don't like doing. Let me do it up here. Uh, v, the volume now will be integral of AX big, I'll put it up here, DX minus, ah, sorry, integral AX small DX as you guys know, the key again is finding what? Cross-sectional area for the big, you know, washer. Cross-sectional area for the what? The big disc, small disc. So now, these are both discs. So you can think of it as disc one, which is big, disc two, which is big. This is still that disc what? Method. You still got your disc method. The question then I have for you is if you focus on the big disk, what was always the key for any cross-sectional area? It's always finding the what? The radius function. You need a radius function because this is still pi r squared. This is still pi what? r squared. Let's say it's the radius for the what? The big, if you want to call that, the big radius and the what? and the small radius. So you need two radius functions here. Okay, you need two, and now we have to figure it out. Let's see if you guys can figure it out. For any x value, we have to find the cross-sectional area function, really the radius function. 
and it's in terms of x. For this value of x, you see this point and this point, right? For this value of x here, I've got two corresponding y values. Don't I? x, I got this y value. For the x, I got this y value. Anybody want to tell me? Why am I focusing on those two points? Isn't that the big radius? Would that be your big radius right here? Yes. And isn't this the small radius? Yes. So the big radius, ladies and gentlemen, is actually what curve? We, I would say, do you get used to calling this the top and the what? Bottom curve. Because the big radius is actually the top curve, while the little radius is what? the bottom curve. So you want to get used to the top curve and bottom curve. Because in your book, they don't call it big, small. They'll say, you know, top, what? Top curve and what? Bottom curve, okay? I'm gonna erase this stuff, you guys have that? It's a washer. Um, your book's gonna say that those curves are top and bottom. So what you're gonna end up with is that this becomes really as a formula, um, all right, we'll integrate pi um, r squared top dx minus the integral pi r squared bottom dx. Properties of algebra, properties of integration. You guys remember, I could pull out my pi and I got r top squared dx minus uh, the integral r squared bottom dx and then this becomes pi integral really r squared what top minus r squared what bottom dx this is the volume function or the volume formula sorry when you have what method the washer, two disks, a big disk, small disk. So the top radius is the big, the bottom radius is the what? Small disk. Double check, is that really? Yeah, that's our formula. Yeah, exactly. Well, well, when it's top bottom, when you rotate about the x-axis, it's a top bottom situation. Yeah. When it's rotated about the y-axis, it'll be inner, yeah. That's an, oh yeah, what, did, what does your book say, inner and outer? Yeah, it says outer radius. Outer, yeah, you know what they call the outer, yeah, so this is the outer radius, fine, this is the inner radius, doesn't matter. I thought that was the polar. Huh? I thought that was the polar. Polars? Polar, yeah, like when you're doing the polar. Yeah. It might be. That's good, that's a good observation, yeah. You use that same language. Yeah, you'll use it. Good stuff, okay. Now, what was that, what was the top radius? You're going to plug in here what? e to the x, don't forget to square it. What do you plug in here? e to the minus x, don't forget to square it. So all the details here is that our volume becomes pi integral e to the 2x uh, minus e to the what? Negative 2x. And that's dx. Now, I think unfortunately or fortunately, it doesn't really matter. We know now how to integrate. Well, uh, let me point this out. Don't you have really two integrals to do? You guys know what I'm saying? You got two integrals. And um, sometimes I call this, let's call it integral one and integral two, two integrals, so that what you'll do is simply do the work for each integral. So for integral one, it looks like you're going to have to do, uh, what's that method now? Now this has to do again with calculus two. Aren't you going to have to what? Is it U substitution? So you guys know you have to use U substitution now, right? What is U going to be? Isn't U 2x? Then you get du dx. 
is 2, or you're going to say that dx is uh, what? du over 2. We're going to use this. So your integral becomes um, e to the u du over 2, which is 1 half integral e to the u du, 1 half e to the u. It's not plus c because what's your limit? 0 to 1. So don't forget, 0 to 1, 0 to 1. This was actually, this is in general a to b. Okay? In particular, in this problem, it'll be 0 to 1. So I have to remember u is 2x. We integrate this from 0 to 1. So I get 1 half e to the second power minus 1 half e to the 0 power, right? Isn't that just be, uh, 1 half e squared minus 1 by doing some algebra? Factor out your 1 halves. e to the 0 is 1. You're left with e squared minus 1. Is that true? Double check, see if I make, make a mistake here. And that's just integral what? Integral 1. What about integral 2? Let me... Which one do you guys want to erase? The washer? Yeah, it's kind of... Yeah, wash the washer here. Here's your integral 2. We have... The integral from 0 to 1, e to the minus 2x dx. What's your u again? Minus 2x. What's your d, uh, du dx? Negative 2. dx becomes du over what? Negative 2. So we're going to integrate from 0 to 1, e to the u du over negative 2, okay? So you get, again, negative 1 half integral e to the u du, negative 1 half um, e to the u, or negative 2x from 0 to 1. we got to find out what this is. So let me put it back up here. This is negative 1 half e to the, plug in 1, negative 2. This is going to be plus 1 half e to the 0. Are you guys okay with that? Why is that? If I plug in 1 here, is that minus 2? This is already negative. So when I subtract, the opposite of a negative becomes what? Positive. Minus 1 half e to the minus 2 plus 1 half. So you might even say that's 1 half minus 1 half uh, e to the negative 2 power are 1 half 1 minus 1 over e squared. That's the second what? That's the second integral. Yeah, I wish we had more board space. Double check, are we okay with that? It looks like that's the second. Anyway, um, what can I erase? Should I erase this? You guys okay if I erase the original picture? Okay. So we got pi for volume. First integral. One half e squared minus one. Okay, and then you got minus, right? Minus another one half, one minus one over e squared. One half e squared minus one half, minus one half plus what? One over two e squared. Uh, you get pi times one half e squared minus one plus one over two e squared. And ladies and gentlemen, I think that's probably good enough, right? And what do you guys always want to know? Should volume be negative? Could volume ever be negative? I don't know. 
I don't know. If your curves are, you know, I don't know. I don't want to think about that. I don't know. You guys want to think. Think where the volume should be negative. Are areas ever negative under a curve? Yes. Under a curve. Oh, I got you. No, you got me. <laughs> That's funny. Anyway. Okay. This is this is actually looking at volume by the disk washer method when even in a capitalist two setting because the functions you looked at were capitalist two functions. Okay. Um, let me also show you though. Ah, another variation. Another. This is a capitalist two problem. So can I erase this here? Let me show you another. You guys, another variation of all this. Okay. Here we go. Should we close the door? Is it is it hot? Do you guys feel it? It's okay. I actually feel uh, warm. Yeah, I don't know. People kind of like Ed. I don't know. It just feels real. Take a look at this. Y equals E to the minus X. And Y, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, and Y equals two. And X equals what, one. And I think they want you to rotate about. The line, Y is negative three. Okay, calculus two question. So we're going to merge all the ideas we're talking about with this kind of question here. And let's look at the curve. So let's find the bounded region here. So if we say y is e to the minus x, again, we know that goes through what? This point, this is where 1 is, y axis, this is x, never crosses the x axis. This is your exponential function represents decay. This says y is what value? Two. What kind of line is y is two? Yeah, what is it? It's a horizontal line. So again, if this is one, let's try to be a little bit more, you know, whatever, artistic. Is this a line y is two? Okay, your y-axis, your x-axis, y is 2 is a, what kind of curve? The horizontal? Yeah. What about x is 1? It's vertical. And then, let's see. So the region they're talking about, this describing the bounded region, what do you guys know? Looks like this. Is that true? It's your bounded region? Everybody okay with this? Mm -hmm. All right. Now what's interesting about this? Right, this is two. This is one. Negative one, negative two, negative three. Why am I trying to find negative three? What do I have to do with this? I'm going to have to rotate about the line y is negative. This is not rotation about the x-axis. This is about the line y is what? Negative 3. So rotation about the line y is negative 3. Now when people usually see this in the calculus uh, class, they run for the hills. <laughs> okay, um, they kind of run for the hills.
Okay, let's cut. But I'm going to show you guys how it's actually not that bad. It's not that scary. Now, remember how we how we've been doing this process. We're trying to look at this region here, how it's defined, and for any arbitrary value of x, let's say the x is right here, we've been rotating that particular what rectangular strip. It was about the x-axis. It's no longer about the x-axis. It's about another line that's actually horizontal. So we're rotating about horizontal lines here. So if we rotate about this horizontal line business, okay, about the x-axis, um, what are we looking at? If I take this rectangular strip, aren't we looking at what? Is that a disc? Good, we're looking at a washer. So because we're looking at a washer situation, you say the volume becomes pi integral of, what do we say here, r squared what? Top minus r squared what? Bottom, and that was dx, okay? And then we had to integrate between what? A and B, is that true? You guys okay with that? So this is a good question. Well, what are my limits? What does X vary? Do you guys know? Where does X vary? Well, this is one. X is between what two numbers? Right, all of these vertical lines here, X starts somewhere over here at this point. I don't know what point this is, but it starts over here and it goes all the way up to one. So I know my upper limit is one. So in this formula, my upper limit will be one. The question is, what is the lower limit here? What's this value? Does anybody know? We don't know. So what's gonna happen is we have to determine that particular value. How do we find that value? What do you guys think? These are curves that have just what? What's, what do you guys notice about these curves? These are curves that have intersected each other. How do you find points of intersection always? You set your y values equal to each other. Is that right? What's, the, what's one of the curves? Y is 2. So in other words, for this limit here, we'll just note we have to find the limit. And it is the lower limit. Y is 2. We know that. What else do we know? What's the, where, what's the other curve? Y equals e to the minus x. So you have to set the two curves equal to each other via the y coordinate value. So if my y's are the same, that implies 2 is e to the minus x. You guys okay with that? That's okay. That's okay. And then how do you solve now for x? You take ln e to the minus x, ln 2 properties of exponents. Okay, take out that e to the minus x. You get minus x, ln e is ln 2. What is ln e again? ln e is 1. So we'll get minus x is ln what? 2. What does that mean about x? x is minus ln 2. And you know what I can say even further? It's really ln what? one half. If I really wanted to get fancy. Why is it L in one half? You guys see this? Negative, negative one by the power rule for logs. That negative one power belongs to the two. Two to the negative one, is that one half? So, you know, sometimes when you're working with logs and you're looking back at the book, you get, oh, I get negative L in two and they have a L in one half, that's what happened. So this is gonna be L in one half. So look at all that work just to set up this what? One problem. Those are always uh, good test questions. <laughs> Sorry. You say, why is that? Because there's a lot of work to set it up and do it. Do you have enough time to set it up? Do I don't know. That's another issue. That's, that's true also. Yeah, calculus is a really, I mean, I mean, how about this? This is what drives me crazy too sometimes. Do you have enough time to go through the, the gory details of every solution as an instructor? Boy, in a calculus, you know, 
like I said, there's a lot, there's a lot of time that you put into doing a problem on a test. That's very true. And there's a lot of that. There's, there's even like a lack of time in going through all the details of every homework problem. And that's very true in calculus too. You know, but this is part of why I want to videotape some things. Because then you can tell people like even now and even in the future, just say, okay, there's some video on some of the solutions. Go take a look. You know, uh, because it is very challenging to, um, you know, there's a lot of work involved. Um, especially when you explain every detail, there's a lot of work. So anyway, and that's going to be a theme. You ever take math courses where they just tell you what, go read it or go do it on your own? <laughs> no. You ever have to do a lot of that? Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, how about this? Let's, let's actually think about this, okay? This is the key. This is only finding that limit, but you said we have now a washer. So what does a washer look like? It kind of looks like what? This. Right? Yeah, whatever. And what did you really have to find? The top radius and the what? The bottom radius. I also said to you something like, and I use language like what? Big and what? Big and small, right? What does your book say? Inner and what? Outer, right? So whether you said big, small, top, or bottom, you might say top is associated with what? The outer, the bottom is associated with the what? Inner radius. Why am I changing that language a little bit? Could you guys tell me what in the world, oh, if I know what the, what the outer radius is, I just plug it in here. That's for R. If I know the inner radius, I plug it in here. That's for R. Could you guys tell me what the outer radius would be? Huh? What's the outer radius? The outer radius. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm glad I don't take myself serious. This will be forever on the tape. <laughs> Ed, can I use your shirt? Yeah. No, he's wearing a sweater and it's 90 degrees outside. Yeah. <laughs> Am I okay? All right. Who cares? What's the, what's the, you guys already know? What is, what is the outer radius? Why is it the outer radius here, R out, going to be 2 minus a negative thing? Ed's going to tell everybody he knows about this. <laughs> why is it 5? Can anybody tell me why it's 5? Remember, you find an x value, right? You got the top point and you got the bottom point. Uh, what, what is it? It goes back to one of the things I said earlier. How do you actually measure distance? And, it, and if you're measuring distance vertically, how do you do that? It is always, 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 like I said, you get out a ruler Here's your ruler. This is partly why I draw some of the strips. And let's say you want to measure something vertically. Let's say you're going to measure, I don't know, a pencil. And you said, okay, this, this, this measurement on top right, was seven centimeters. Down here, you happen to start on maybe two centimeters. You guys okay with that? So you started at, you started at two, but you went all the way up to seven. Could you tell me, how do you deduce the length of the pencil? It is 7 minus what? 2. You guys with me on that? And that says that that's 5 centimeters. You say, well, why do you bring this up? Because if you wanted to find for that x value, the outer radius is right here. Do you guys agree with that? Because when you rotate about this line, oops, sorry. Yeah, this is the outer radius. You rotate about this line, this is the, the top of the measurement, and this is what? The bottom. 
What are the corresponding values? Well, y here is what number? Two. It's constantly two. This measures two. Y here measures what? Negative three. So what is two minus the negative three? Two plus three, which is what? Five. Here's your outer radius. And that's how you do it always. Yes, it's a washer, but what's the deal? This is the outer radius. What is this? Could you guys tell me what this is? This is now your inner radius. Is that true? Okay. What's the top here for the inner radius? I'll call that Rn. What is this? Isn't that? What curve is this? e to the minus x minus a negative what? 3. Isn't the inner radius going to be e to the minus x now plus 3? Look at that. That's what you guys are going to use. <laughs> okay, so let me say this. Let's plug this in for you. And uh, let's see what we get. Volume is going to be pi 1 natural log 1 half. Uh, isn't that going to be 5 squared minus, uh, this is my outer minus my inner, so we're going to say this is e to the minus x plus 3 squared. This is dx. Twenty-five minus e to the minus x plus three. You have to square that dx. L in one half and one. Now, how do you guys integrate that? You have to use what here? Use foil. Um, isn't this going to be okay? Let me go over the details. Um, is this e to the minus what two x? Is that true? First term, e to the minus x, e to the minus x, same base, add my powers, okay. My O and I term, this would be 6, e to the minus x. Last term is 9. Okay. Can I erase this? You guys have that? Okay. See, we need two boards. Let me erase the top here, I guess. I don't know. So, you get, um, well, let's see, we get 25 now minus e to the minus 2x minus 6 e to the minus x minus 9. 25 minus 9, isn't that 16? So my volume is going to be pi, I integrate 16 minus e to the minus 2x minus 6 e to the minus x dx. This is going to be ln one half and one, okay. And what do you guys notice? Is that the integral you guys get? I think so, is that right? And you're gonna have really, it depends on how you go about it. How do you guys wanna go about it? You wanna look at it as, how about if I say this? This is pi, 16x. Plus, is that e to the minus 2x over 2? Is that plus 6 e to the minus x? Evaluate from Allen 0 0.5 and 1. What do you guys think? Huh? Yeah, are these are these integrals right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Huh? We do you guys remember how to integrate U substitution? You okay you okay with this? You sure? People are gonna want to see it. I know. I know, I know. Uh, let's integrate this function. You with me on that? So call that I this is I1, 16x. Call that I2. Uh, let's say minus 
uh, integral e to the minus 2x dx, right? You say u is minus 2x, du is minus 2 dx, or dx is du over negative 2. So this is negative integral e to the u, du over negative 2, 1 half integral e u du, 1 half e u, it's not plus a constant because we've got limits, so that's 1 half e to the u is what? Negative 2x. That's why I have that here. You guys okay with that? That's where this one came from. Now what about this one? Call this i1, i2, i3. i3 then is the integral that's minus 6e to the minus x dx. Okay, again, u here is going to be minus x, and du is minus dx, so that I get minus integral 6 e to the u, and that's minus du, which makes it plus. So that's 6 integral e to the u du, or 6 e u, which is really 6 e to the minus x. That's why I got plus 6 e to the minus x. Okay, we'll give you guys some time to take a look at that. Now, I guess I'll just erase this picture. So, um, anyway, the volume will be pi now, 16x plus 1 half e minus 2x, right? plus 6e minus x from natural log of 0.5, 1. So what we'll do is plug this in. Pi, 16 times 1, plus 1 half e to the minus 2, because x is 1, x is 1, plus 6e to the minus 1, okay? Minus pi now, 16 natural log of 1 half, plus... 1 half e to the minus 2, natural log of 1 half, plus 6 e to the minus, natural log of 1 half. A little. There's some, uh, oh, what's going on here? There's some work we could do here. You see these powers? Okay. There's a little bit of work here. All these details, like I said, isn't that by power rule one half to what's one half to the negative two power? Isn't that four? Isn't that four? So let me let me do this. Pi sixteen plus one over two e squared plus one over six e in the denominator. This is this version here, and then we're going to say I'll close that minus pi. 16, natural log of 1 half, I'll tell you kind of how, I mean, all right, well, let's keep this here for now. Here's what I want to focus, plus 1 half. That is a power for 1 half now by power rule. So 1 half to the negative 2 power, I'll, I'll get rid of this. 1 half to the negative 2 power, what happens now? Just to let you guys know, okay? This is 1 half, negative 2 is 1 over, 1 half squared, 1 over, 1 fourth, 1 divided by 1 fourth, okay? 1 times 4, this is really 4. Okay, so this will be now, my 1 half is here, e natural log 4. What about this? What's negative 1 power for 1 half? That's plus 6 e natural log 2. Does anybody know why I wanted or I had to do this? What's e natural log 4? Good. What's e natural log 2? Good. So, your volume will be, okay, pi. 16 plus 1 over 2e squared plus 1 over 6e, okay? 
minus pi um, 16. Natural log 1 half, okay? What's 1 half of 4? Is that 2 plus 6 times 2? Is that, isn't that plus 12? Anyway, yes, it is tedious. 16 plus 1 over 2e squared plus 1 over 6e minus pi, 16, natural log 1 half, plus 14. Anyway, um, if you guys don't know, we could actually just factor pi, um, pi out and put this together. Uh, what's 16 actually minus 14? Because remember, you have a subtraction here if I factor pi out. Isn't 16 minus 14 2? 1 over 2e squared plus 1 over 6e. Okay, minus now. 16 natural log of 1 half. Anyway, double check my arithmetic. I, th I think it's okay. Double check. 16 minus 42. Double check. Is that what you get? That's good. Yeah, that was, a, that was a calculus 2 question. You guys know that? That was calculus two. Anyway, what's our time like? It's one o'clock? Huh? Yeah. It's one o'clock? Okay. All righty. Uh, okay. <laughs> How do you guys feel? Are you feel? Do you guys feel okay? I'm trying to just look over my notes here. This, this. Okay. Here, here. Okay, let's go. Let's go over a couple more here. Okay. You guys okay with that? Anyway, that was a long, tedious problem. <laughs> Go over a couple more here for you. So let me give you some more and, um, you know, we'll take a quick step back. So we'll take a look at this example here. Go back, kind of make it a little simple. Curve is 1 over x, y is 0, x is 0 0.1, I guess. Okay. x is 1. I don't think you need y is 0. You just need x is 0 0.1 and x is 1. And then we're going to rotate about the x-axis. So take a quick step back here in this one. Okay, we just kind of back up a little so we can kind of absorb some of these ideas. Anyway, let's go back again. And what does the curve of y is 1 over x look like? Yeah, it's hyperbola, right? Okay, good. So if x is 0.1, I'll say it's a vertical line and then x is 1, is another vertical line. Uh, I guess you do need y is 0 because I have this boundary, this boundary, top boundary. So I take it back. I guess we need y is 0. And when they always say y is 0, that's simply code for what? For the x-axis, just to let you guys know. 
y is 0 is the x-axis, x is 0 is the y-axis. So here is the bounded region. So let's take a step back here. We're going to rotate about your what? Your x-axis. Once again, you take your horizontal strip here because x is going to vary now between what two numbers? Point 0.1 and 1. This is where your x varies. You take that rectangular strip, what do you do with it? Rotate it about the x-axis. What do you guys see as a result? Is it a washer situation? That's a what? Good. You created a what here? This is a disc. Okay? So when I rotate it, we get the disc. Right? This rectangular gets rotated, you have a disc now. So what do I need for a cross-sectional area? Right? My volume is going to be the integral from point 1 to 1, cross-sectional area dx. What does that cross-sectional area look like? It's pi really r squared. Okay? What is r going to be? Yeah, r, and let's kind of be careful with this. For some value of x, I have this point and I got that point. What's the, what's, this is top minus bottom. The bottom is zero, isn't it? This is the top. So your radius is one over x, good. Volume, 0.11 1, pi over one over x to the second power dx. So I get pi um, integral 0.11 1, 1 bless you over x squared dx. Okay, very simple problem. Just the disk method. We're backing up a little bit. So now what you're going to get, how do we integrate this? Isn't this x to the minus 2? So we get pi uh, x to the minus 1 over negative 1, evaluated from 0 0.1 to 1. And then that gives me negative 1 over, or I should say negative pi over x, evaluated from 0.1 to 1, which is going to be, oh, what is that? negative pi plus, okay, let's do every detail, minus, minus pi over 0.1. Don't you put the 1 down here, right? So we get minus pi plus pi over 0.1. And uh, it, what is this? What's 0.1 anyway? Isn't that 1 tenth? So what, what's pi divided by 1 tenth? This is minus pi plus what? Plus 10 pi. Is that true? Yeah. So what's pi minus pi plus 10 pi? That's 9 pi. So we backed up a little bit here. Okay, for that problem. Let's get, let's get one of these out of the way. Okay, let's try another one. You guys okay with that? We backed up, this is just the disk method. Let me pull another problem out. Pull another problem out. I'm going to do. Um, we're going to do a couple, another example. Let's see how you guys handle those those skills that we looked at. We'll keep it a little simple here. These are problems. Y is x squared. Y is eight minus x squared. Um, and y is negative one. Oh no, we're going to say rotate about y is negative one.
Okay. This is y is x squared, right? Y is eight minus x squared, so there's an eight up here. That's your y-intercept. You're coming down, this opens down. Ah, uh, you know. Okay. So this is my bounded region. So what's gonna happen is I gotta find that point of intersection and it's really supposed to be um, symmetric here, okay? So my curve sketching, I'm not as careful as I should be. Anyway. Okay, ooh. Oh my gosh, that doesn't look nice. Let me do it again. That looked worse. Um, <laughs> let me start with eight then. We'll come down. So it kind of symmetric. That's y is eight minus x squared. And then here, point of intersection. Another point. Y is x squared. Right? Oops, we didn't have to label it twice. Okay. That looks a little better. So what am I supposed to do with this particular region again? I gotta rotate it about what? Y is negative one. So let's say negative one is here. It is not to scale, but I'm rotating this about, you know, the line Y is negative one. So here's my point to you. If we rotate it now about the line y is negative one, is this a disk or a washer method? This is now what? This is a washer. You say, well, why is it a washer? Because if I take, it doesn't matter. I'll take a horizontal strip that's right here, okay? So for some value of x right here, I take that strip and I rotate this about y is negative one. Don't you have that hollowed region right inside here? So that makes it a washer. So if that's the case, we say our volume will be the integral. Um, I got my pi, r outer squared minus r what? Inner squared, I guess. Top radius, large radius minus bottom radius. So all I gotta do now is identify which is the top radius. Well, for this value of x, I hit my curve here, I hit my curve here. So what's the outer or top radius? Anybody know? Let's be very careful. Isn't the radius actually not what? The distance from here to here, isn't it the distance from here to what? To here? That's going to be my outer radius from these two points, this distance. But what curve is on top? What curve is here? 8 minus x squared. So r out will be 8 minus x squared. This value minus what? This is negative 1, right? Minus negative 1. So my outer radius will be 9 minus what? x squared. That's what I'm going to plug in. What's the inner radius going to be then? Our inner radius, I should say, is actually going to be what? Is this distance. And you say, well, what is that? Well, that's x squared now. Okay, let's take a look. OK. 
Okay, let's... Let's double check everything's on. Yeah, it's okay. Sorry. Okay, let's take a look here. Um, are we fine? What do you guys think about that, right? This big radius, uh, this outer radius, and this is the inner radius. Minus that, that's a negative one. That's vital. So what you'll do then here is that now your volume will become pi uh, integral 9 minus x squared squared minus inter, inner x squared plus 1 squared dx. However, there's something that's vital that's missing. What do you guys notice that's missing? We, I mean, we can integrate. We're not going to get our answer yet, though. Why? Don't we need what? These points of intersection? Right? What are the points of intersection here? Don't we need those points? How do we find them? Set the curves equal. OK. So I'm going to say, y is x squared here. y is 8 minus x squared. That's x squared equals 8 minus x squared. Translate. 2x squared is 8, right? Divide by 2. x squared is 4. I like this. This means x is plus or minus what? 2. So this is going to be 2. And this is negative 2. So I can actually integrate from negative 2 to what? To 2. And what I'm going to say to you guys is let's kind of be a little smart about this. I don't like to integrate negative 2 to 2. Especially when I have a what? Symmetric scenario. When I have a symmetric scenario here, this is supposed to be symmetric. Can I just find the volume of this, let's say what? Can I find the volume of this right portion here? And then just what? Double it? And then I can now integrate from 0 to what? 2. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to double it so my volume becomes 2 pi integral 0 to 2. 9 minus x squared squared minus x squared plus 1 squared. That's what I'm going to have to handle. Double check to see if we're right. Are we OK with that? I think we're fine. 9 minus x squared squared. Anyway, I'm going to say a couple of things for you guys here. Um, if you do the algebra, <laughs> I know. If you do the algebra, that 9 minus x squared, 9 minus x squared, minus x squared plus 1, x squared plus 1. We could do it kind of fast. 81 minus. 18x squared plus x to the fourth minus, uh, what is that? x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 1. 81 minus 18x squared plus x to the fourth minus x to the fourth minus 2x squared minus 1. Okay, look what happens. Gone, gone. Um, this becomes 80. Gone. Gone. 81 minus 1, 80. Negative 18x squared, that's negative 20x squared. So my volume becomes 2 pi integral 0 to 2, 80 minus 20x squared. That's doable. And so uh, you integrate this. This isn't this 80x minus 20x cubed over 3 from 0 to 2. You guys okay with that? So I'm going to erase this here. Okay. So my volume will be 2 pi. Let's see if we don't mess up with the arith arithmetic, right? 80 times 2 minus um, 20 times 2 cubed over 3, okay? minus 2 pi, and that's a nice, this is nice because it's, I, pl I plugged in some zeros. 
See how the zeros work out? You guys always want to do that if you can, because it's going to make your, your arithmetic, this goes away, much, much nicer to handle. 2 pi, 160 minus, what's 8 times 2, is that 160 over 3? And then, ladies and gentlemen, almost done, 2 pi, isn't that 480 minus 160 over 3? Multiply both top and bottom by the 3. And I think we got 2 pi, four, what's 480 minus 160? Is that 320 over 3? So my volume is going to be 640 pi over what number? Over 3. Double check. 640 over 3? Does 3 go into 640 without a remainder? I don't think it does, right? Six plus four is 10. 10 is not divisible by three. So anyway, this is actually, you know, some of the tediousness that you have to go through in computing some of these volume questions, you know, and this is about rotation about y is negative one now. Now, actually, I, I, I think what we're gonna have to do so you guys know is this. What I want to go over is this is what I call, we went over what's called the horizontal rotations. <laughs> you also have what? Vertical. <laughs> this is only horizontal. So we also have vertical to do. So I hope you guys brought your sleeping bags. We've got vertical. And then you have another method. This is just a dishwasher. You also have spherical shells. Huh? Shell yeah. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm thinking of it. I'm out of the course here. I'm already losing it too. You're right. The sh shell method. Spherical shell. Shell method. Sorry. Cylindrical shells. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking different. Cylindrical shells. Shell method here. So I'm thinking here, okay, just so to let you guys know. We also have those methods, both horizontal rotation and vertical rotation for those. So you